Hey everyone, I'm Jeff Butts, and uh, I'm from the Mac Observer, and the time has come. Uh, I've got all of the parts lined up. I'm going to build a custom Hackintosh, and I'm going to walk you through step by step everything I do to get this puppy up and running. So let's start off by taking a look at the parts that have come together to make this Hackintosh. Okay. This is basically the main components. I haven't laid out the fans that I'll be using um, to help with the airflow in the system. But what you can see, I've got a Gigabyte Z170X UD5 motherboard. I have a, an Intel Core i7 6700K unlocked CPU along with a Cooler Master CPU fan and heatsink. Uh, for memory, we're using the Crucial Ballistic Elite, a uh, total of 32 gigabytes of RAM. Storage space, I'll have a Crucial 1 terabyte M2 SATA NVMe drive. Uh, I will also be incorporating a Seagate Barracuda 10 terabyte Barracuda Pro for extra data. And the video card will be a Gigabyte Radeon RX 460 with 4 gigabytes of RAM. The case is in a Pivia X Sniper 2, and you'll see that a lot better once we are built and I take the final shots and video of the compiled machine. Um, I am going to shoot video of various parts of building this system. But right now, I'm going to put in the additional case fans. The case comes with one fan. I want to add some more to make sure I've got plenty of airflow. So I will uh, be back with you soon, as soon as I get those fans installed, and we'll start installing the motherboard and all of the other components. Okay, back to the build. At this point, I've got my fans and power supply installed into my case and I've installed my motherboard standoffs. Now I didn't video that because it differs based on your case design. Your case may have a removable motherboard tray which makes it a, a slightly easier to install the standoffs and then the motherboard. This case does not have a removable tray so I installed the standoffs and now I'm ready to install the motherboard itself. So, um, I'm going to get my motherboard and I'm gonna ground myself first. And I do that by touching a bare metal part of the case before I pick up my motherboard. And then I will carefully pick up my motherboard. And I'll just move cables out of the way and set the motherboard down. Slide it into place on my standoffs. And with that done, I'll be ready to go ahead and screw the motherboard down. Uh, Gigabyte makes this really easy, so does the case. Um, I've got all of the screws that I need to secure my motherboard. So I will just get them one at a time and gently secure the motherboard to the case. Now you don't want to tighten this too much. Um, if you over tighten these screws, you can cause damage to your circuit board. And that's something that you absolutely do not want to have happen. Um, the motherboard isn't the most expensive component of this build, but it's still, you know, it's, it's, it's a, a sizable part of the build. And if you damage it, you'll be very unhappy with yourself. Um, if for no other reason, then it means you have to wait until a new motherboard comes in 
before you can finish your build. So I'm being very careful not to over tighten these screws. This is an ATX style motherboard. Um, I opted for this particular layout because it offers me the most expandability later on. This is a professional build, or it's aimed to be. Um, so I've gone with a mid size, with a mid tower case, and I've got an ATX motherboard that offers me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven expansion slots. Uh, PCI Express. Now, granted, I can't use all of those at once. Um, they do lock each other out. Uh, the the fastest PCI Express slot will disable one of the lower speed ones. But be that as it may, it still offers me plenty of expandability. And the fact that uh, that this has a lot of other components built into it helps matters as well. Um, just a little background on this motherboard. This is from Gigabyte's Ultra Durable series. So the capacitors are built to last quite some time. Um, as are most of the other components, uh, circuits and whatnot within the motherboard. It does have four dim sockets for memory and it has a slot for a um, an NVMe drive or a non-volatile memory express drive and that's going to be our primary boot drive we've got a one terabyte NVMe drive provided by Crucial and then for a secondary drive I'll have the 10 terabyte Barracuda Pro, made by Seagate. Just installing the last screw in my motherboard to secure my motherboard to my standoffs. And with that done, I'll be ready to install my CPU. I will not show that process uh, simply because it requires a lot of concentration and I don't want to talk while I'm doing it. So I will get that done and um, once this build is completely finished, I'll show you the inside and then I'll put the case back together and show you the outside. So stay tuned. Okay, so I didn't get a chance to take a video of Valtour after it was completed, but I do have a collection of pictures that you can take a look at and that'll go along with my shopping list and my article on how to put everything together. Talk to you soon.